Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? This morning, we're going to be reading out of Ephesians 1.11, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Notice it says, he worketh all things. The whole verse says, in him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Not some things. Not a few things. There's no happy little accidents, as Bob Ross would say. All things. That means there are no things that are outside of the control or will of God. A lot of people seem to think that's the case. <clears throat> Excuse my sinuses. But I don't know where they get that from. Makes no sense. Doesn't make any sense to... to think that, well, this was outside of God's control. Well, now you just made him, he's not omnipotent. He's not omnipresent. He's not omniscient. But we've been taught this. I was taught this as a kid. We've been taught that there are things outside of God's control. I have since, after reading the Bible, learned the contrary. Everything is within his control. And boy, that sure gives a lot of confidence and a, a lot of comfort. So let's read this in context here. Um, we got to go all the way up to verse 3. The beginning is a greeting. Spiritual blessings in Christ. <clears throat> verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We have them all right now. You may not realize it. You may not know it. You may not be able to see it, but they're all there. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That we should be holy. He's gonna. He's gonna, the one that's going to make us holy and without blame. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Notice he said he made us accepted. It's already done. In him, we, we're the ones that just haven't come to the realization of it yet. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. That's the day of redemption that's coming. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, from Adam to Abraham, 2,000 years. From Abraham to Jesus, 2,000 years. From Jesus to us, it's been almost right at 2,000 years. When these times are up, because that's 6,000 years, there's a going to be a thousand years of rest. He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. The Lord is going to come and he's going to receive his people. Give me one second. Okay. Verse 11. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, <coughs> who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the rede redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Amazing. Our belief in God's wisdom supposes and necessitates that he has a settled purpose and plan in the work of salvation. And we know that to be true by the scriptures. What would creation have been without his design? 
That's very interesting. What would create? Well, first of all, it wouldn't have been creation. There would have been no creation if it wasn't for the design of the Lord. Is there a fish in the sea or a fowl in the air which was left to chance for its formation? Evolutionists would say that's the case. I tell you this, if evolution was true, you wouldn't have what you have today as far as the animals go and the plants go. It, they would be grotesque, monstrous things because everything would be fighting for survival. The reason why it all works in unison is because it was created to do that. Nay, in every bone, joint, and muscle, sinew, gland, and blood vessel, you mark the presence of a God working everything according to the design of infinite wisdom. Did you ever see that diagram where they showed because some, some scientists, you know, we got abilities to look at things much close, more closely uh, with more powerful telescope or, uh, microscopes and uh, they looked at a, a single celled amoeba the one with a little tail that you see under the microscope so small you can't see it, it's on your skin it's all over the place and so they were, they zoomed in real tight on its tail now, this thing is microscopic. It's small. Well, they zoomed in on its tail. Now, you would think a creature so small, a single-celled, wouldn't be complicated. I forget what the number was. It was like, like 36, like the tail has 36 parts. It's an engine. It has 36 parts that make it move. I'm probably wrong on the number. It may have even been more. But if you ever find that, you know, it talks about how it's a little motor. A little uh, organic motor, biomechanical motor, and it's made up of parts. It's very complicated. And it blew their mind when they saw that. And they're like, that's not by accident. That's by creation. And God shall be present in creation, ruling over all and not in grace. So God's going to do that, but he won't show grace. Shall the new creation have the fickle genius of free will to preside over it when divine counsel rules the old creation? Look at providence. Who knoweth not that not a sparrow falleth to the ground without your father? Even the hairs of your head are all numbered. God weighs the mountains of our grief and scales. Your suffering has value, guys. That's why that verse says that. He weighs the mountains of our grief in scales and the hills of our tribulation in balances. And there shall be a God in providence and not in grace. He's driving home the point of people picking and choosing when the Bible tells us it's only one way. Shall the shell be ordained by wisdom and the kernel be left a blind chance? No. He knows the end from the beginning. He sees in its appointed place, not merely the cornerstone, which he has laid in fair colors, in the blood of his dear son, but he beholds in their ordained position each of the chosen stones taken out of the quarry of nature and polished by his grace. He sees the whole from corner to cornice, from base to roof, from foundation to pinnacle. He hath in his mind a clear knowledge of every stone which shall be laid in its prepared space. And how vast the edifice shall be, and when the top stone shall be brought forth with shoutings of grace, grace, unto it, at the last it shall be clearly seen that in every chosen vessel of mercy Jehovah did as he willed with his own, and that in every part of the work of grace he accomplished his purpose and glorified his own name. When you see the city of New Jerusalem, it will help you understand. Now, there are many that may not see it. There are many that won't see it. But there are many of us that will. It's a city 1,500 miles across. And 1,500 miles high. That's a big city. That's a big city. You can't help but see the design of God in everything. 
you do an aerial view of Israel and you pan back and the mountains, you can see the character, the Hebrew characters, Yahweh, spelled out in the mountains. Kind of weird looking to see that. Um, I've seen things in other places that stood out like that, that were natural formations. It's like, whoa, you can't help but see that. Weird stuff like that. You don't think God's going to sign his work? Sure he is. An artist signs his work. The Lord has put his name and signature on everything. The What makes us up, our DNA, is so complicated, it can only be engineered. It can only be designed. Nothing like this would ever form by chance or by accident. It's impossible. See, if you go by evolution, if you go by chance and accident, humans would have never existed. They'd have been killed out immediately. They don't have enough claws. They don't have enough teeth. They don't have enough strength. And the stronger creatures would have overwhelmed them and overpowered them long ago. You take uh, groups of monkeys, never seen each other, plop them down in a giant enclosure and don't talk to them, don't touch them, don't feed them, don't do nothing, let them figure it out for themselves. They will break off anywhere from two, possibly three, up to five groups, depending on how many of these, these monkeys you put in there. And they'll all fight. They'll all fight for territory and they'll all try to kill each other. That's evolution. What we have today is not evolution. What we have today is creation because those things don't happen. <coughs> there is a restraining force that stops those things from happening. And things go according to the way they should go. Now, a lot of people will say, well, but this thing changed. We can see that this creature does this. That's adaptation, not evolution. Big, big difference. Anything can adapt. And it may have to adapt by changing certain aspects or characteristics of, of it in order to adapt to that. We, we do the same thing. So I'm, I, I've grown up here in the South, and I have a certain level of accent from living down here. If I go to Australia for 10 years, I'm going to come back with an accent. If I go to Great Britain for 10 years, I'm going to come back with an accent. If I go to Ireland for 10 years, I'm going to come back with an accent. I'm going to acclimate to that climate wherever I'm at. I'm going to acclimate to the food. I'm going to acclimate to the laws and, and the way people do things and how people communicate. And if I come back after that 10 years, I'm going to be different because I adapted. I didn't evolve. I adapted. Creatures do the same thing. Animals do the same thing. They adapt. They don't evolve. God created it that way on purpose. So many people, and there are people today calling themselves Christians that are going out there on these big networks where they're able to be seen and heard. And they're talking about these things, saying, well, we have scientific evidence that says the earth isn't 6,000 years old, but is actually this old or this old or this one. They all pick a different number. Well, that's incredible. It's incredible because in the same strata where you look and discover that, oh, look, this part down here is this old and this part up here is this old. Well, tell me how that tree is growing straight up through it. Each one of those layers kind of throws your whole this old, this old in the, in the dumpster because obviously it's not. And so for, there, it's a big mistake for people to go out there and say, oh, well, we know the earth is 15,000 or 100,000 or 14 million. The one guy was talking about, I saw yesterday. Well, that's not true. The language used in the book of Genesis says it's a 24-hour day. You gotta, just got to look at the original language and, and look at the definition. It's easy. It's free. You can just go and look at it and go, oh, okay, well, that says that. Same thing with the, like a lot of people are coming against the 70-week prophecy. 
Well, how do you know that's weeks of years? Because the language, the, the wording, the words and their definitions say weeks of years. It literally tells you that's what it is. But they'll do anything they can to justify themselves and justify their understanding. If the Bible says it was created in the six days, it was created in the six days. And, and they'll say, well, you're just blindly believing it. No, I'm reading what the original language said. Six days. But how do you know that's right? How do you know it's not? Are you going to go based on a supposition where no two scientists can agree? Or are you going to go off what the facts show? The same thing applies to flat earth. No two flat earthers can agree on how flat earth works. They had a convention a couple of years ago. 100,000 people there. All of them arguing because no two of them could figure out what it's... No two of them could agree. Well, that ought to give you a big red flag right there. Something's wrong. Scientists are the same way. Oh, it's this old. No, it's this old. No, it's this old. We have evidence for this. And they all want to pat each other on the back. Hey, look, we proved the Bible wrong. And still call themselves Christians. I, I, I pray the Lord has mercy on them whenever they have to give an account for that because if you're going to try to prove the Bible wrong and call yourself a believer, does that not constitute you being a non-believer? Isn't it that you, you actually don't believe the Bible? It's crazy. I don't know where they're coming up with this. It's got to be from Satan. So if you're at a crossroads with this, for example, the creation, if you're at a crossroads, Lord, I read what your word says, and it says six days. And I hear all these people that are smarter than me saying, well, we know different than that. Lord, I may not know for sure because I wasn't there, but I'm going to trust your word because I know you won't lie to me. If it says six days, it's six days. It's so funny to me how people are so cavalier about believing this stuff or presenting this stuff, and yet they still call themselves a believing Christian, and they're literally trying to undermine the authority of the Word of God. That's kind of shocking, but that's what they're trying to do. So when we read stuff like this in Ephesians 1, it says that God worketh all these things according to his own counsel, his own will. It doesn't work to what we decide. It doesn't work to what we want. It works to what he says according to his design. And I like that. I like that. And I've had conversations with Christians before and I'm like, I take him at his word. And they're like, oh, see, that, that's your problem. You just you just want to give all your control and all your power over. Yes. You don't? No, I want to have some power and some control. That's your problem. You want to have power and control. God doesn't share his glory with anyone. So since you didn't create it, you have no control. Since you didn't speak it into existence, you have no power. You have no authority. You don't have those abilities. You may think you do, and the Lord may give you a sense of it until the time comes for you to go and stand before him. And then you'll realize you had no control at all. And what little he did give you, he took away. Terrible. So we don't have to do that to ourselves. We go to the Bible and we believe the Bible. So this is one of the hardest things for man to do to do today is to believe the Bible. And I think that's why the Bible has become such a prevalent book today. In generations past, the Bible wasn't a prevalent book. In this day and age, it's everywhere. You can't go anywhere without finding a Bible. I think the Lord did it on purpose. He made sure his word was readily available to everybody so that no one would have an excuse. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, say, well, we didn't know. You, you, you know, all these people said these things, but we didn't know. Well, the you were in the bookstore looking for that other book on witchcraft or whatever, and you scroll, went right past the Bible and saw it, your eyes saw it, and you didn't pick it up. I, I had all these people speaking all this truth on all these social media platforms, which everybody fell in love with, and, and they had them out in the streets declaring the truth. They were all around the world, and you, you still say you didn't know when they were literally telling it to you? No one will have an excuse. What does the book say? That's what we go by. 
And in this day and age, that that's the big telltale sign of who a real believer is or not. If if a if a and I've said this for years, if a person says they have a problem with the Bible but call themselves a Christian, that there there's a the huge problem, huge problem. If a person says they're a believer and they believe the Bible, there's your marker. There's your litmus test. That's what splits us all in half. Okay, everybody in this room is a Christian? Okay. Who believes the Bible is true and who believes the Bible is not true? And I want you guys to split into, into, into two groups. And you're going to end up with three groups. You're going to end up with a group that says the Bible is true. You're going to end up with a group that says, well, no, I think there's some problems with the Bible. And then you're going to end up with a group on the fence going, well, I'm not really sure. That's where the church is at right now. We're broke into three different groups. We have a tiny little group of just a few individuals that say, yeah, the Bible is true. We have a massive group that says, oh no, the Bible's got problems. We can't 100% guarantee it, it's authenticity. And then you got a medium-sized group that says, I don't know which side to pick. Who do you think's lukewarm <laughs> of those three groups? Who do you think's cold? Strange days we live in, guys. Strange things that people are doing. This has been a weird year, and it's only going to get weirder before it all changes. So don't be surprised by what you see. And don't be surprised when people come and they attack you because of what you believe. <clears throat> I tell you this as a fact. And people may disagree with me, but the Bible talks about this. I tell you this as a fact. There are people out there who call themselves Christians that want to kill you and I. They want to take our life. And just like the Bible says, they think they are doing God a service by shutting us up. That's why they try so desperately to stop us now. That's why, that's why they try so desperately to shut us down and keep us from talking now. That's why they, they orchestrate all out assaults on us. If we do a video, a social media post, we comment, and they come after us with as many people as they can. They actually make plans on social media and get groups of people together. Hey, all y'all go over to this channel, and y'all are going to go over there, and y'all are going to comment uh, against them. When did the Lord tell us to do that? And yet they do. It's amazing. The amount of effort put into denying God when all they have to do is just believe. And it all comes down to that. Do you believe? Do you believe that God works all things after the counsel of his own will? I do. 100%. And that belief gets stronger and stronger every day in myself, because, especially because of what I see happening. I see his will working. And it encourages me. And it is a great blessing to me personally. We can all have that blessing. Do, you, do we believe? Do we believe the Bible is true? We have more than a mountain of evidence that shows that you can read all the original writings. There's no excuse. When they talk about the whole thing with the pre trib rapture, old Darby invented it. I don't know why you're saying that because we have a mountain of evidence that says otherwise. Oh, uh, there, there's no evidence out there. Uh, yeah, you want me to start dropping names? Which means you'll have to go do some homework and go read them. And, of course, when I do that, so far every single time except for once, one singular time in five and a half years, every other time, I told them, well, I can give you names. Are you going to go read them? In fact, I'll give you links to it if you want. And you can go and read it for yourself. I ain't got time for all that. Okay, well then the problem isn't the evidence. The problem is you. You don't want it to be true. That's why you won't go look at the evidence. And that is a shameful testament against you. Especially since you call yourself a believer. All they want to do is argue. That's it. They don't, they don't care about evidence. But I had one person say, are you serious? And I was like, yes. I'll send you links if you want to look them up. Now, I never heard back from them. But I sent them the links. I hope that that person came to a, a greater conclusion.
It's scary, a scary thing to see how many people are so easily duped. Even though they're, they're called Christians, easily duped into believing a lie. And it kind of makes me wonder, since we're so close to the end, it, it seems like with everything happening, if the Lord isn't doing that thing, because it says in there that he will make them to believe the lie. It kind of makes me wonder if that's exactly what's happening. It's a terrible thing, guys. God does things according to his will. It will happen according to his way. And we can look at the world today, look at what's happening, and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that things are going exactly according to the will of the Lord. Which, most notably at this very moment, is evidenced by the countries that are currently they're gearing up to wage war against Israel. And what's funny is, is that all there's five of them, five key countries, Every one of those countries is named in the Bible as doing that very thing at the end times. Well, amazing. Here they are. They're called by name. And they're doing the things the Bible says they were going to do against Israel. Can you imagine? Open a Bible up in one of those countries and read through there. Whoa, wait a minute. That's us. And we're doing that. Hey, somebody needs to call the president. Hey, you need to look at this. The the, the Christian Bible says this about us. And, and it, we're doing that. Well, that don't mean nothing. This was written 2,000 years ago. And some of these books were longer than that. three and 4,000 years ago. And it, sa it says these things about us. And we're doing that. And they'll still say, I don't care. What would it take? What would it take to get people to see that God is working his will right in front of our very eyes all around us every day? Not only on the world stage, but in you and I's life. Do we not see it happening right there before our very eyes? Sure we do. It's glorious to witness. It's amazing to see. It's incredible. Incredible. I love it. <coughs> I love being able to see it and being able to tell people about it and to see their response. And when their response is negative, I just, I smile and say, I knew you'd say that. Oh, you're psychic now? No, I read the Bible and that's what it said you would say. So instead of proving it true with your own actions, why don't you just listen to it and believe what it says? And you just might be amazed at how much your mind changes and how much your eyes are open to see his hand working, not only around the world, but right there in your very life. If they would but open their eyes, they would see. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to lift you up and to sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. It is incredible to see your will working in our own lives, in the lives of those around us, and in the lives of everyone around the world. In all world events we see happening, we see your will working. You work all these things to the counsel of your own will. And the Bible states that very clearly, Ephesians 1.11, our target verse today. Well, we're, if we're going to come to a place of true faith and belief, we have to believe what your word says, not only about you, not only about our Lord Jesus, not only about everything else that's happening and the prophecies, we have to believe it all, everything, no matter what it is. And unfortunately today, people don't do that. They find excuses. They find workarounds. They find all kinds of little things that they can find to not believe your word and to try to use your word to disprove your word and yet still carry the title of Christian. And I have had to warn many. You call yourself a Christian, but you're trying to disprove the Bible with other parts of the Bible. And you are standing in a dangerous place, and I am not willing to stand there with you. You had better repent. You had better change. Because this is a bad course of action. And Lord, yet, Lord, they still want to do that. Well, I believe your word, Lord. We believe your word. And we are, we are happy. We could not be happier to see your will working, the counsel of your will working, not only in our own lives, but around the world. I would rather have it according to your design and according to your counsel and your will than anything else. Sadly, for the most of the world, that's not the case. 
Well, Lord, my prayer is, is that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You showed us how to pray. You said that in your, in your example prayer that you gave. And so I, that's what I pray. Your will done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will done in all things, especially concerning me and my house, but also concerning all of my other brethren in their houses. That your will be done in the world around us. On full view and display for all to see. And that Lord, just like Elijah did, I pray that their eyes are open so that they can see. They can see what they're doing. They can see what you're doing and glorify you because you are worthy of that glory and so much more. Lord, your will be done on all things. Your will be done concerning all of mankind and all of creation. And your will be done concerning your prophecies of these end times because it is so amazing to be alive now and to see these things unfolding and to be able to go right into the Bible and go, there it is. And we're seeing it. And that's amazing to me. To be alive now, awake and saved, and to know these things, amazing. What a privileged generation we are. What a truly blessed people we are at this time. Lord, do not hold back your blessings concerning us, but instead pour them out. Pour them out so that every believer every true born-again believer can see you doing your will not only in their lives but in the lives of those around them and it's all for your glory and it's all to the praise of your holy name thank you father for your mercy and grace thank you for your great love thank you for your free gift of salvation in jesus name we bless you praise you honor you and glorify you and in the mighty name of jesus christ we pray Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. It doesn't get any more direct than that, I guess. The world is going to deny him at every chance they get, even if they carry the title of Christian. That's what we're seeing today, unfortunately. It shouldn't be that way. But God's will is going to be done regardless. Concerning us, them, everyone. And so our prayer should be that his will be done in every way, in every place, and in every person. Because everything works out for our good if his will is done concerning us. And so, like our target verse says, he works all things to the counsel of his will. Let's pray that, that he works all things to the counsel of his will. Because his will is perfect. And there's things he knows we don't. And there's things he's going to do that we haven't experienced yet. And it, concerning us, it's going to be incredible. So guys, hold on to your hats. If you're seeing things you can't quite explain, and you're like, I think that's in the Bible, that's for, that's for a reason. That's by design. Just know your life and where you are at right now is not an accident. You being here right now is not an accident. You being saved right now is not an accident. It's all on purpose, and it's all by divine will. Praise your God and bless him for showing you such mercy and grace. A mercy and a grace that we are unworthy of. But he decided to shower upon us anyway. How can you not love God for that? I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name and I'll see you in the next video.